I want to welcome every one of you guys who are just getting in. We are starting off a little early so that we can make sure that the tech is okay for this webinar. We had some problems with our earlier ones in the months earlier. So I want to welcome you guys who are waiting for this to start. And we're just going to wait a little bit more. We've got 15 minutes until we begin. Just 10 more minutes, guys. I want to let you know that we're going to be having a live Q&A at the end of this webcast. So if you have any questions about art marketing or anything we're going to be discussing today, please let us know in the Q&A part of this Google Hangout.
Hello to everyone who's just coming in. We are going to begin the live cast in about nine minutes. So if you have any questions for our live Q&A at the end, please get those ready and we will get started very shortly. For those who are just coming in, why don't you introduce yourselves? What state are you from and what do you do? Are you an artist, illustrator, cartoonist, creative entrepreneur, or just a business owner? We'd love to hear from you.
Okay, everyone, we're going to start in two more minutes. I just want to welcome those of you who are just stopping in and getting ready to watch and engage with us. If you have any questions, we're going to be doing a live Q&A at the end of this Google Hangout, and we can talk further on everything we're going to discuss today. If you want, introduce yourselves, what state you're from, and what kind of work that you do. If you notice, there's a Q&A app that's a part of the Google Hangouts where you can actually ask questions and enter there. I'll be able to see that as we are doing the webcast. Okay, everybody, I want to welcome you today to our live Google Hangout. We're going to be talking about art marketing and video specifically, and we're going to touch on everything from the latest live streaming apps, social media, and some other topics we really need to focus on that aren't really stated in a lot of the um, blogs and sites that are out there today for entrepreneurs. So I'm going to try to lay it out for you very simply and um, make it easy for you guys to digest. I know there's a lot of things that we can talk about, but we'll also be doing a live Q and A at the end of this. So make sure you got your questions ready and I'm sure you'll come up with some more as we are going on in this process. I'm going to try to keep myself at a slower pace. I tend to talk pretty fast. But um, if you guys have any questions or anything confuses you, let me know as well. So today we're going to be talking about live streaming, social media, and the convergence of mobile and traditional marketing. This is a really important topic for visual artists of any kind, whether you are a fine artist, illustrator, cartoonist, you name it. This is going to be very important for you. This is the kind of stuff that really lends itself to the creative work, the creative arts, because we offer something that's very visual. So before we begin, I want to introduce myself a little bit for those of you who don't know who I am or haven't really heard the entire story. Um, I'll just give it to you in quick bits. I started my art career in 2004 when I listed my first painting on eBay auctions. And over the course of the years, I really developed my own business on my own. I came from a small rural town in mid-Michigan. I didn't have any money, no funds. I started it all through social media and the web. In 2009, I started working with startups and other companies who were really recognizing how I was utilizing digital and social media to market and sell my work. And that's uh, been a really incredible experience. I traveled all over the country. I helped people create digital strategies for their traditional markets and to help target their audiences online and really move into the digital space, which was quite new at the time and really just developing. And in 2011, I founded Art Career Academy for Artists where I wrote and taught over four or five courses and have written several books on the topic of art marketing and art business in the digital space. 
But I want to state this again. I did this completely through the use of social media and for the last 12 years. I have not had any virtual funding or loans or backers or sponsors that helped me get there. I did that all on my own. So let's just state the cons and the pros to the challenges and advantages that I had as an independent artist and how I built my career. These were big cons, even though there are very few. I grew up in rural Michigan. I had no financial resources. I didn't grow up in a rich and established family, and I didn't have any connections or a support system from people who were in the art community or had their own businesses. I had to learn everything on my own. I had to find out how to run a business, how to sell my work, and, you know, I had that advantage at a young age. I was already learning how to do this kind of stuff when I was very young. I was selling my work at elementary school. I would start my own businesses when I was young. And so I always had that kind of a knack, but really anyone could do this. And it's just a matter of understanding how and what you need. So my pros, these were the things that really helped me get out of my small bubble, my little world where there was little opportunity and little that I could do. I, of course, thank God, owned a computer and had access to the internet. And there were times when I could not even afford an internet bill, but I would visit internet cafes whenever I needed to, to write a blog post, list a new painting, um, find new opportunities, do my research, any kind of work related thing with that. I was very resourceful and I would visit libraries. I would even go to Barnes and Noble and I wouldn't buy a book, but I would pick up anything that was interesting that could teach me something about business and marketing. And I would sit down for hours on end, just looking through this stuff, getting ideas, researching. And, and it really was um, a completely self-taught, self-launched career. Now, so let's talk about this, the advantages of technology. And this is what it did for me. And this is how it can benefit you as an artist. We've got to understand that social media is changing how marketing works. How we market to people is completely different today than it was uh, 10 years ago, five years ago, even two years ago. Things are changing rapidly. We've got the opportunity to launch a business no matter where we are. Like I said, I come from rural Michigan. I come from a very small town with one red light. I had no money. I had no connections. But the internet, the internet, sorry, the internet gives you so much ability to climb that ladder, get to the top, do what you want. We no longer are limited by our location. We're no longer limited by the financial means that we have if we really want it. We have accessibility to a larger audience. Because of social media and the web, we don't have just our local vicinity to market and promote our work. We can touch the lives of people across nations, all over the world, and that is a huge deal. This has expanded our reach beyond our local circle. And like I said, it's a cost-effective startup. You don't have to start with very much money. You don't have to put any funds towards marketing. You can use social media completely free as a very powerful tool in your marketing uh, campaigns for your artwork. And what's really great about the fact that you have that opportunity to launch your own art career and do what you want, you can be very creative with how you market and how you expose your art to your audience. Whew, I really got to slow down. I can't even take a breath as I'm talking, but... Um, before I go on, I want to welcome you guys who are just coming in. If you have any questions, we're going to be doing a live Q&A at the end of this. And if you have some now, get those ready for the Q&A. And I'm sure you'll have some new ones as we talk further about this. Oh, just a moment, guys. I just dumped water all over my computer. <laughs> Hold on a moment. Luckily, I only got the edge of my computer. I'm sure it didn't go into the whole thing. But if you guys want, you should probably get like a notepad or paper so you can take notes on this whole thing. I don't want you guys to miss a thing. I've got a lot of content here 
and it can be overwhelming, especially if you're not the marketing type or you don't really get into this kind of stuff. Okay, hopefully my computer is okay. That was scary. Sitting here trying to talk so fast. Okay. Woo! <laughs> Oh my gosh, let's just hope I didn't fry my computer. Typical, typical, typical. I've done this before last year. Almost ready, guys. Okay, can you guys hear me okay? Let me know in the question, the Q&A spot, because I spilled some water on my computer and I don't know if that's affecting anything as far as sound goes. I can't believe this happened. The last few webinars. Couldn't do them. Now this one, I'm spilling water on my computer. <gasps> you guys have those days? Ridiculous. I can't believe I just did that. A few moments and I'll get back to this. I'm just drying my computer. Let me know if you can still hear me. Okay, moving on. Getting back to this. How are you guys doing today? All right. Back at it. And so let's go on now. How is digital changing marketing. We're no longer a form of broadcasting, but of sharing. This is a new world where we aren't just adding on advertising to the basic places. We're not just doing radio ads. We're not doing billboards. We're not focusing on one media, but all different medias as a collaboration. We are realizing that in order to have an effective marketing campaign to promote our art, we really need to collaborate on these tools. So traditional media is still effective and really important, but new media is the biggest game changer and it's all converging together. You don't just have people using Twitter to tweet about something. You don't have people just simply making video. You have them doing a combination of different things um, for an effective marketing campaign. And of course, like I said, our range of exposure is larger. We haven't just been able to market on a local level, but we can go national and international. We are reaching people of all different audiences and different target markets. And now we're realizing that one of the most important things, and we still get this wrong, guys, the consumer is your strongest marketer. These are the people who can make or break your brand. And the rate of technology's advancement means we must change with it. So what do I mean by that? Technology is advancing rapidly. You ever heard of Moore's Law? It's the idea that technology is changing. Um, I believe it. Yeah, over here it says the observation that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit doubles approximately every two years. So in simpler terms, technology is changing really, really fast, and we've got to adapt to it. So you've seen how the cell phone has changed exponentially since 2005, since 2000, since 1996. Who knows? It has changed so fast that it has gone from a simple flip phone with buttons to becoming a small computer in your hands with the ability to do 
anything and everything you ever could have done on your computer. The chips get smaller, the technology gets smaller, and of course, the technology is improving while it's also becoming more affordable, which means not only is technology actually advancing, but you are getting more and more people who are using the technology. Cell phones are getting in more hands than ever before, and computers are becoming more accessible than they've ever been in the history of the computer. And that is another very important fact to remember. That means more people are connected than they've ever been and more accessible as an audience and target market. So I know it sounds harsh, but we've got to adapt or die. We've got to keep up on tech research. I hope you guys are being, um, what's the word I'm looking for, determined on getting yourself educated. How is technology changing? What are the latest tools out there? What are the social networks that other people are using? Try them out. Observe them. And um, if they're really confusing, you don't have to absolutely use everything else that everyone does, but you've got to get an idea of how it works and how it might be able to be at some advantage for the kind of work that you offer. Can you guys still hear me okay? I hope my computer is not dying on me right now. <laughs> I just spilled so much water. I can't believe it. I'm so lucky it didn't get on top of the keys. It was on the side though, so I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried my computer's gonna fry any minute. Okay, moving on. So, in conclusion, what is relevant now? We need to focus on coupling the different networks. Like I said, using the combination of different social media to market our art. We're no longer using one form of advertising alone. You know, we're using um, video, we're using Twitter, we're using blogging. Um, and coupling different media together provides a more powerful um, brand exposure for your art if you are putting it in more than one place. Uh, how am I, Let me see how I could put this in simpler terms. The more eyeballs you can get on your art, the better. I mean, that's common sense, right? So you can't just use one thing and hope that someone sees you. Your website's like an island. Think of it like an island and, and no one knows it's there. It may have been uh, publicized. It's public and you can find it. But without the use of social media, which helps bring exposure to the site, you are an island and no one can find you. <laughs> no one can claim you. It's really, really important to understand that and to understand that without some form of plan to promote or market your work, no one is going to see it. You're going to be lucky if you get a little bit of traffic. And what's also important is the growth of consumer-powered marketing. That is what social media is. And, you know, a great example is I have used Twitter to talk to my cable company when something is wrong. And a lot of people have services in um, action where they work with their customers and deal with issues, find out how they're doing, how they like their services. A lot of big companies are doing this right now and it's really incredible the power of social media and how you can really connect with your consumers and your target market. Um, it's vital for us as entrepreneurs and independent artists to know the power of social media and how it works and how we connect with our potential targets. Um, targets, that sounds like I'm hunting, I don't mean it that way, but our potential collectors, our potential customers, our potential fan base. It's really important um, that we are connecting with them, that we're giving them the ability to share uh, our content and our art to other people because they are their, our biggest marketer. So what do we need to do? One is we need to start focusing on mobile marketing. I don't know if you've noticed this, but a lot of websites and shops are now going mobile. They realize that people are using mobile more than anything they've ever used in the last five to 10 years. It's where people are shopping, people are looking at their apps, connecting with their friends, emailing their offices. Um, employees are using it to keep in touch with their bosses. It's just... 
the common thing right now. It's a little computer in your hand, like I said. I mean, you can do everything on this. And so a lot of things are going mobile, and that is the direction we need to focus on, especially as artists, to make sure that our sites are um, – set up to be visible on a mobile device, any de mobile, mobile device, that we focus on our sites being really clean and clear and simple to use. So I don't know, back in the 90s and even today, I still see this to this day. Artists creating websites and they're putting all kinds of weird graphics and um, ac active GIFs and glitter, glitter titles. They're putting too much stuff on their website and not focusing on their art. Um, it's really, really important if you create a website where the art is the focus. Um, make the, the website really clean, white, black, very crisp, so that the focus is on your work and not on anything else. It's really important so that it's easy to see on your mobile device. It's easy to see even on a website. You want to make your art accessible. So this is really important. And they call it UX, user experience. This means you're making sure that your website is clean, clear, beautifully designed, that your art is the focus, that the content like your biography, your artist statement, anything describing your art is really simple to read, very quick to read. And the navigation is very simple and uncomplicated. This is what you want because users are very short. Um, their attention span is very short. I mean, even now, I'm probably driving you bananas because I'm rambling. Anyways, <laughs> I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. Um, but the visuals are key to an effective marketing effort on our part. And using the most powerful search engine today, which we're going to talk about in a few moments here, this is a search engine that we fail to realize is, is really vital to our business and really important right now and brilliant for visual artists. It's got to be part of our marketing plan. We've got to figure out how to get people to our site, and this is one of those things we've got to start using. And uh, we got to learn how to optimize our content, which means titling our artwork effectively with per the right keywords, uh, making sure all the information about the artist, us, our site is available on anything that we post on the web and that people, when they're sharing it, they can tell whose work it is, where it came from, all that stuff. So let's talk about the second largest search engine that people are not thinking about. This isn't Google, guys. Pretty darn close, but uh, this search engine processes more than 3 billion searches a month. It's the fastest growing website in the world at this moment. It's bigger than Bing, Yahoo, Ask, and AOL combined. It's the mobile makes up more than 1 billion views a day on this, with 1 billion unique monthly visitors, and nearly one out of those two internet users are on this search engine. Can you guys guess what I'm talking about? What is the search engine we're talking about here? Because the stats to this are huge and they're overwhelming. It's kind of mind-blowing how much this is used. Can you give me a guess? It's YouTube, guys. <laughs> YouTube is the second largest search engine on the web. Can you believe this? Video is a powerful tool, you'll get, tool you guys. It's 50% of online video, which now counts for 50% of all mobile traffic. 78% of people watch videos online every week, with 55% of them watching videos online every day. They're expecting by 2018 for it to have risen to 89%. That's eight, almost 80%. That means only 20% is not watching video. And we're not just talking YouTube. We're talking video, period. It is the most engaging content to watch versus a plain blog post or even a picture. We've talked about this a lot in uh, my course on Art Career Academy about how engaging video is and how you can utilize that for your art business. It eliminates and alleviates hesitation of potential collectors. And what I mean by that, sorry, slowing down. What I mean by that is you are creating something that feels like it's in person. If they're watching a video of you creating the work, they're seeing the 
the process being done. They're watching the textures. They're getting to have that behind the scenes experience with the artist. Secondly, you're showing people your your work as an artist in a way that almost feels like they're there in person. This creates authenticity. This creates a trust between you and the potential collector. This creates more interest to a potential fan. And it gives them a closer look into your work in life. This really is um, a unique form of content that can be simple to use, can be simple to create no matter who you are or where you're from or what you do because we have the accessible tools in our hands to create a video. So here's some ways how you can use video and mobile marketing to effectively market and share your work. These are some ways um, that you can use video. You can do Q&As where your fans and collectors can ask you questions and you answer them on video. Another huge one, which we'll talk about a little bit more, is live streaming a creative session, whether it's an art show or a live painting or you're working on your Cintiq tablet and you're illustrating a book or a comic strip. Maybe you want to do little art workshops. You're not limited by galleries any longer. You don't have to just teach a class at a local gallery or art store. You can do those on the web, through your website, on YouTube, and you can do it as um, a free offering or you can even charge people a portion on your site to take your workshops. Also, another incredible thing when we forget to, we forget this as artists, is process videos. Process videos are you know, um, maybe a time lapse or from start to end full version of you creating an artwork right there on video. People who are not artists are absolutely mind blown by watching the process happen from beginning to end. It's like magic to them. And we talk about this all the time, especially in my course at, on Art Career Academy video. Uh, using that to show the process of your work is absolutely magical. And I really recommend this as the first thing, especially if you're uncomfortable being on video, you don't want to talk. Just showing the process of your work is all you really ever need to focus on. So I would say that's the number one thing artists could start working on right now to um, produce content. And uh, how-to videos. These are really cool if you want to start um, art workshops of your own or you want to really focus on video as your brand, um, doing little uh, tutorials on how to use different media, how to draw certain subjects or paint landscapes, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is that you do, that is a really great way to um, establish yourself as an authority in your craft and also gain some interest in your work. Even your fans will love watching how-to videos. I have a lot of fans myself who have children and they love to see me pro do something um, that teaches them how to draw. They love that stuff. So I really recommend that too if you ever in the future want to teach. So here are some very popular apps. They are either completely mobile-based or they are online. Like, for example, you see Google Hangouts right here. Um, Google Hangouts or Skype or Twitch, which I don't mention right here, are some really great life casting webcasting tools if you want to hold a Q&A or do a live painting or a workshop with your fans. And there are ways to actually broadcast privately. Another one I really love is Spreecast. Um, you can use it for free to an extent, but if you do a monthly membership subscription to it, it gives you the ability to charge uh, people to come watch your broadcast. It has an amazing, amazing um, interactability with the viewers where they can ask, ask questions and it shows up on your screen and you can show that you're answering it. Just amazing technology. And the big hitters right now are Instagram, which people forget allows you to offer a 15 second video. And I really need to see this utilized more by you artists. I'm not seeing it yet. Maybe there are and I don't know about them. I would love to know if there is one that is using it really great. Um, but this is a huge, huge place for art and artists, and I want to see some more videos being used in this site. Vine, which is also a short-form video, 
app, completely mobile. Um, it was founded by the people who created Twitter and Periscope, also a Twitter app. This one is a big one. Meerkat's been used for a while, and it's really great for journalism. But Periscope, I believe, is really going to be the, the sustainable site app. And they allow you to live stream. And there are two differences between Meerkat and Periscope. I believe with P Meerkat, um, it saves the content after you broadcast, and people can watch it for perpetuity. I don't know. Um, but Periscope only leaves your content on there for 24 hours. And while that can be a bummer because you lose that content, there are some um, benefits. Number one, it allows you to save your videos after the broadcast and you can post it somewhere else. And that whole rarity of only getting to see you for 24 hours on there is a huge boost to um, drive your fan base. I mean, it's really an incredible tool for connecting with people. You can chat with the person on video and people are utilizing it in so many different ways. And we could talk about that in the Q&A a little bit if you would like. Um, now for the permanent long-term video forms, places like Vimeo and of course, like I talked about, YouTube are the really really popular video sites and there are others out there and another thing that people forget about is Facebook allows you to post directly a video and that is um oh boy if we could go on about Facebook right now and marketing I think that is one of the most effective ways to get your content in search in the timelines right now versus just posting because I know people's visibility has gone down significantly since your algorithms changed and video is where you should focus with Facebook. So some closing thoughts on this. Um, remember, be original. I don't wanna see you guys creating video content that's like everyone else. If you go to YouTube, there are a lot of creatives and artists that are doing tutorials and how-tos and art supply hauls, but they're all doing the same content, anime. Anime is huge, and yes, there's a lot of there's a huge tween audience, but there are adults using this site. There are corporations using this site. You got to stick to your work. I promise you, it's worth it in the end. Be consistent. Show your own work. Do stuff that is based on the kind of work that you do. So focus on your art, not what seems popular. And like I said, share your process. Those process videos, those time-lapse paintings, people love seeing that. It's, uh, it's amazing how much people love this. And find unique ways that support your art brand. So not just doing the process videos, but doing short little videos where you talk about your work or the latest thing you're doing, um, an art show coming up. Maybe you're doing a video about the art show. You're at the studio. You're at the gallery. People love seeing behind the scenes of an artist's life because they don't get to do what you do. <laughs> they need something that gets, gets them out of the mediocre, that gets them out of the mundane, and you are that key. So some marketing focal points that I want you guys to focus on. Number one is mobile. Like I said, it's becoming the main source of all content viewing and shopping. So artists have a huge advantage of this. You don't even have to try that hard. Posting artwork online is a cinch, but really making sure that the websites that you have set up for your art are um, responsive to mobile. A lot of websites aren't made to transfer very well onto mobile devices, um, but there's something called responsive design. Uh, WordPress has it, um, and a lot of sites will adjust to the mobile so that they can read and go through your website without it being really clunky and complicated. But make sure that your site doesn't have a lot of weird graphics and unrelated information and content that's completely unnecessary. Focus on your art. Make that the main source. Uh, make it front and center. And when it comes to things like your biography, your art descriptions, anything that you're writing about on your site or your blog, make it short and sweet. Unfortunately. Short, simple content is where it's at right now. Everything is getting more mobile and compressed. So while blogs are still the mainstay and the source of really uh, deeper conversations, and we'll talk about this in other things, deep conversations versus shallow ones, 
mobile is kind of shifting us towards a place where we are consuming content at a faster rate and in shorter bouts. So keep your content short and sweet. Don't use complicated words. No one needs to go on your site and try to figure out what medical term you just used. <laughs> just keep it simple. And video is king of the web, guys. So find ways to produce video content. A lot of smartphones allow you to record video. A lot of laptops do. Um, and video recording devices are available at stores everywhere, grocery stores, Walmart. And they can be relatively cheap from anywhere from uh, 10 to $20 to you know thousands of dollars, depending on what you want to do. Start small. You don't have to be super professional. You don't have to look good. You want to be unique to the work that you do and the stuff that you offer. So find ways to produce it. And start with short video clips. If you've never done video before and you're really uncomfortable, don't worry about being perfect because if you don't, just do it. You don't start now, you'll never start, really. Prepping too long, like I talk about all the time, you guys, is um, uh, detrimental to your growth as an artist. It's all about experimenting and just executing on those ideas and trying. You'll get better as you go. Offer instructional or inspiring content like we talked about, how-to videos, um, process videos. And another cool way to use video, especially for things like live casting for Periscope or Google Hangout, you can um, live cast your art show at a gallery or have a studio cam where you're working but you're not talking to the audience. They just get to see your process throughout the day the way that we used to on Justin TV and Ustream. Stuff like that is still very, very powerful. And also, couple your marketing efforts. Like we said, combine your networks for a complete campaign. You want to be able to, when you're, for example, let's use one example, okay? Say you have an art sale. Create a quick video talking about the work that you're offering. Show them the prints that you make or the artwork you have available. Um, then you're going to tweet that out. You're going to share that on Pinterest. You're going to post that on Facebook. The idea is to combine your efforts across these different networks to promote one thing. And that's really going to be more powerful than just posting it on your website where no one's going to see it. So, like I said, we don't have to be fancy or overcomplicate our marketing. We don't have to know everything. We don't have to be data scientists to do this. But we've got to understand a few things and it'll make it very simple for us to move forward. And number one is technology changes so fast. So keep up on the things that are going on. What new apps are out there today? What new social networks are coming out? Just learn what we can and remember that everything can be simple and easy.